47% of United States employees work at small business. It's the heartbeat of everything. You know, it starts, the economy starts with small businesses. That is why we wanted to have this conversation and why we think it's so important. And one of the things I've noticed over the last decade is this shift towards the way we think about the vision for small businesses. And we used to think that the small business vision was the responsibility of the owner, maybe an executive leadership team, maybe the right-hand person of, of the owner. She and, and him get together, you know, every year in the fall and they, they go off and visit, you know, a one-day retreat and they come back and say, here's our new vision and they pass it down to everyone. I think we've learned and continue to learn that today we want to be thinking about co-created shared visions where everyone in your company, whether it's five or 50, is co-creating and building a shared vision for your small business. Third, and this goes to a point you made in your comments, Casey, this notion about challenging the process. And many business owners get very nervous when I talk about this third you know, behavior that the most effective leaders employ in challenging the process. What I've learned is that the status quo is a really powerful force. And you as a business leader have to be willing to challenge the process. I know this is the way we've always done it, Dad. I know, Mom, we've always done it this way. But could we think about maybe doing it another way? And believe me, it takes incredible courage sometimes for a leader to challenge the process and be willing to do that. But if you want to be innovative, you want to be creative, you know, in the 21st century to meet the needs of your customers and clients, you've got to find a way to do that. And the last two really speak to more of your leadership style. It's about encouraging the heart, right, and empowering others to act. And I think if many of us think about leadership and our uh, implicit leadership theory, we wouldn't probably have that on, on, on the top of our list. But increasingly, we're finding today that we've got to empower others. Remember this distributed leadership model we're talking about? Meaningfully empowering, not just giving them titles, but shifting decision-making and responsibility across your organization. And then appealing to the heart. Appealing to the heart. I think it was Mandela said something to the effect that if you speak to a language you know, to a man in the language he understands, that's one thing. But if you speak to the man, you know, to the person from their heart, you know, it goes to their heart and it, it gets them, it, it affects them, their emotions. And I think we as, as business owners today have to encourage the heart. We've got to see people and really bring them through, you know, in our mission and our vision that we've co-created with them. The last leg of the triangle is the situation. I've got my skills and abilities. I marry it up with the right behaviors. But now I have to recognize that the situation is dynamic, isn't it? And context matters. And so when we talk, you know, in this small business leadership report, your, your mileage may be different than the mileage of others, so to speak, because context matters. And if you're trying to start a small law firm, that may be different than a small business owner trying to start a plumbing business. And so context matters. So I want us to think about context that way. And I want us to think about our leadership style being dynamic enough to adjust to the situation and the given environment that you have to act in. And so imagine whether you're working with your right hand person and she's got a decade of experience. How you interact with her is going to be very different than a, a new intern that's just on with your company. And so your style is adopted based on the environment and the context in which you're leading. So in one case, you might be more um, directive, trying to help that person understand the task. And in another case, you might be more delegating in your style and just, here it is, let me help you set up. So those are the three sides of the triangle. Now, to get to the last ultimate piece, my aha moment, you know, was coming to realize that you can have all of those things, Casey. You can have the skills. You can recognize the right behavior. You can even recognize the right situation. But, and this goes to your story, if you choose not to act, you've missed the leadership moment. So inside that triangle is where each of you as small business owners and leaders sit. And you have to act. What does that mean? 
It means leadership is a practice that requires action. So to act, you have to do what? First, you have to discern what's going on here. I'm sitting around my team, my small team, everyone in the company, and I notice my purchasing person is really quiet. Or I notice my, you know, my accountant's not saying much. You've got to be aware and go, you know, what's going on? My role is to bring them into the conversation. Their input is really important as, as it relates to that. And so you have to discern what's going on. You have to recognize that there's something going on here that requires your action. And you must act. It's called the leadership moment in my, in, my, in my kind of terminology. You must recognize there's a leadership moment and you must choose to act. Got it. And we'll let that be the final word today on the Small Business Leadership Report with your host, Casey Callanan, joined alongside Dr. Michael Callanan, principal owner of MC3, the Michael Callanan Consulting Company. Thanks, Casey. You got it.